Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about and instruct you on collinearity, betweenness, and assumptions. All right, what is collinearity? Collinearity just means that there are points that lie on the same line. So in the example to the left, I can see that these three points are going to be collinear because they lie on the same line. These three points, however, are not collinear because they do not lie on the same line. So if I have three points that are not collinear, then they're going to form a triangle. As such, the sum of any two sides of that triangle need to be greater than the third side. As you remember, the distance between any two points is a straight line. So I know that the distance between this point here and this point here is going to be shorter than if I take a trip from A to this point B to this point C. So any, if I have three points that are non-collinear, they form a triangle, and the sum of any two sides needs to be greater than the third side. So you can consider this problem of triangular inequality uh, in this way. So you're at school and you need to get home, but you're a little thirsty and you want to go to 7-Eleven to grab a Slurpee or maybe some of your favorite taquitos. So the question is, is it quicker just to go straight home? And assuming 7-Eleven is not collinear with your trip home, it's not on the same path, is it faster just to go home? Or is it faster to get your Slurpee and then go home? So we can all just conceptually realize that it's going to be faster just to go directly home than it is to go to 7-Eleven from school and then go home. So what that means really is that from school to 7-Eleven and then 7-Eleven home is always going to be longer than from school to home, from that direct path. So any two sides, any two lengths, are always going to be greater than uh, the other length of a triangle. In the last part, we're going to talk about assumptions that you can make from diagrams. If you're given a diagram, you can assume that if you have a straight line um, or a straight angle, then it is in fact a straight line or an angle. So if I were to draw something like this, you can assume that that is a straight line or angle. You can also assume collinearity of points. So if I draw a point here and a point here, you can assume that those are collinear. You can also assume that if I have this line and I have another point, you can assume that this point is between A and B. And you can also assume the relative positions of points, meaning point C is between A and B, but you can't assume that this length is going to be the same as this length, even if it looks that way. What can't you assume? Well, if I draw an angle that looks like this, it looks like a right angle, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a right angle. The only way that you can assume it's a right angle, or not assume a right angle, is if it's defined with this box here, or if the angle is defined as a right angle. Even though segments might look congruent, it doesn't mean necessarily that they are congruent. Same with angles. Even though angles might look congruent, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are congruent. And you can't assume that the relative sizes of segments and angles are anything or any measure other than what's given. So I can say that this is an acute angle, and generally say it's an acute angle, but I cannot say <clears throat> that this is 60 degrees or 70 degrees. Similarly, this looks like an inch, but I cannot really say that it is an inch or not. So <clears throat> in this case, if an angle is not defined with a measure, then you can't assume that these two angles are congruent. If these two segments, segments do not have a measure, you can't assume that they are congruent. Now a congruent symbol might look like two dashes. So if I write two dashes here, then I know that these two segments are congruent. The same way if I write this little arc here, or sometimes two little arcs, then I can assume that these two angles are congruent. And then also if I have two right angles, then I know that the two right angles are also congruent. But unless it's specified by markings, then you cannot assume that the angles are right angles, that the segments are congruent, that the angles are congruent, or that the relative size of segments and angles work out to be 90 degrees or some other representation, 60, 180, 
etc.